Should have ironed this shirt. I've bought a new camera. I'll tell you what that is later. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name's Paul Reed and I'm a photographer, aren't we all? So today I want to talk about using vintage manual focus lenses on modern mirrorless cameras. We're almost spoiled for choice these days of the amount of lenses that we can use on our modern mirrorless cameras. A friend of mine sent me a gift of a whole bunch of Nikon lenses, or as you in America call it, Nikon. And I'm gonna be testing them over the next few weeks. But the one I started off with was a 35 millimeter 2.0 Nikon lens. Now the camera which I like to use these manual focus lenses on is the Leica SL. So that's the original Leica SL. Do you know, I don't even own one autofocus lens for this camera. The Leica lenses, you know, I'm, I'm, I know that they're lovely, the, you know, those big autofocus lenses, but they just make this thing so huge. And obviously they cost a lot of money. Whereas these manual focus vintage lenses cost hardly anything at all. And some of them are just amazing. It feels as if the Leica SL is made to use vintage lenses on. This huge eyepiece, it's just so easy to focus manual lenses using that massive eyepiece. And it really makes a big difference. And you can use this little back joystick here to zoom in onto the image and then do your fine focusing. And the little joystick, you can actually move that point where you want to find focus on. I just use a cheap earth adapter for these lenses. You don't have to spend a fortune to adapt vintage lenses for modern mirrorless cameras. So I took this to a portrait shoot the other day and I did think, you know, I'll, I'll just use it for a couple of couple of shots. But actually, I ended up using the vintage lens on the SL for the entire shoot because it's just that easy to focus these lenses on the SL. The portrait was of a guy that I met whenever I was doing street photography one day and he just said, would you come and just take some portraits for him? So obviously, I jumped at the chance at that. And so I was in Edinburgh, kind of had a little bit of a wander around and I did intend to do some street photography. In fact, I started off doing some street photography. Unfortunately, what happened was I was just doing my usual stealthy action. It is hard to be stealthy with a camera this big sometimes, and I think that's why I got caught. And somebody caught me taking a candid photograph of them. And what happened was he kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, look, would you mind not taking photographs of me? To which obviously I said, yeah, of course, no problem, mate, no problem. And then he said, well, could you delete the photo that you just took of me? And of course I said, yeah, absolutely, no problem, mate. And then he said, can I watch you do it? Yeah, no problem. So I, de I deleted the photo that I'd taken of him. And for some reason, it started to delete all of my photographs. Well, the only way around that was to quickly eject the battery, but it deleted pretty much all of the street photography that I'd done. But here's three images from the portrait set that I did that day. So at least you can have a look just to see how this 35 millimeter lens actually renders. I was really, really pleased with it. And I shot these wide open. And as I say, it's just easy to manually focus these lenses on an SL. It really is. I have tried adapting lenses to my Fuji XE4, and whilst it is possible, and I'm sure I would get used to it, but I do find that the viewfinder it was just a little bit lacking for the fine focus. If you haven't used vintage lenses on modern mirrorless cameras yet, you really should give it a try. I've got loads of these Nikon lenses. I'll tell you what they are. I've got the 35 millimeter F2 lens, the clicky aperture, smooth focus, and built like a tank. And I've got this 105 millimeter 2.5 lens, which is pretty famous for the rumor that this was the lens that was used by Steve McCurry to photograph the Afghan girl. You'll have seen that photograph before, I'm sure. I've got a 50 millimeter 1.2 lens, I'm not sure what that's going to be like because normally whenever some of these older lenses, uh, you know, I've got something like a 1.2 aperture, 
they can be quite soft so I haven't used this yet if anybody else has used this then let me know in the comments if it's any good or not but I will find out and I've got this 135 millimeter 2.8 lens again I've no idea what this lens is like because I haven't used it yet but I'm looking forward to using all of those lenses now the last lens that I've got is a standard 50 millimeter 1.8 lens and that's on my new camera the Nikon FM2 since I've got all these vintage lenses I'm gonna get a Nikon film camera and I'm gonna use these vintage lenses on here also I had been meaning to shoot some film anyway and I just thought well why not this this camera feels like it's built like a tank by the way it feels really nice in the hand and I'm really excited to be using it I'll be doing some videos on that too my intention is to print the images in a dark room like I used to do in yesteryear and talking of prints I've got these fantastic C type prints back from the printers I'm so thankful for the people that have supported this channel by becoming a member of the channel that I'm going to be giving all four of those prints away to one lucky member. So if you want to be in with a chance to win those prints, then if you go to the about section and go to the support, then you can support the channel by becoming a member. I'm going to be doing the draw probably late next week and then I'm going to reveal who the winner is. I've got lots of videos coming up soon that you're going to love. If you want to make sure that you watch those then make sure that you subscribe and then press on the notification bell and also just like and comment on this video it really helps with the algorithms. I'm going to be doing some platinum palladium printing again so I can't wait to show you a video about that. As usual I'll leave a link in the description for RJ Print Lab who does fantastic workshops on how to platinum palladium print. I also do my own online workshops so I'll leave a link in the description for those too. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.